This has been a pretty awesome year for me. There have certainly been challenges though, both in global sense and also in a more personal way, such as me coming down with a cold Christmas day, which delayed this video. And yeah, sorry if I don't sound right, still getting over it, but I really had to get this up at some point, hopefully by the first of the year. And also other videos I want to do by the first of the year, but we'll worry about those later. But as a whole, it has been pretty great. And a lot of the highlights of the year have been related to YouTube and the anime community as a whole. I have said before that the reason the anime community is so great isn't because of the anime, but the community. Or at least I think I've said that before. Maybe paraphrased. I thought about it at least, so there's that. And it's really true. I love being part of this community. It's just so great how passionate it is about anime and there are just a lot of great and interesting people I've met through this hobby. So when counting down the top memorable moments related to anime, how could I forget the times that I've been involved with the community? So what I want to do for the final date of the 12 Days of Anime is to tell you a few of the stories of how I've been involved in the community in ways that stood out. So, starting off, we have Arby's. No, not just the anime things they post on Twitter, though those are really awesome, but the fact that I got a chance to meet one of the greatest anime professors of all time at Arby's through a work trip, and that is none other than Professor Mighty Pie. And then we took weird selfies and posted them on Twitter, along with possibly making the staff of the Arby's question what was wrong with us, but I don't live there, so I don't care what they think. And now I want Arby's for lunch. Which I actually did go get, I took a break from writing this, went and got lunch, and then forgot about this for a while, and then wrote more of it later. So, where was I? Oh yes, Arby's with Mighty Pie. I thought it was really cool getting to meet someone who I was talking to on Skype most days in person, and it's just sometimes easy to forget that the person on the other end of the internet is an actual person. Like, you see him as like the text or the voice or the weird things he sends, but it's another thing to like be across the table with him, be there in person and do weird things in front of Arby's. But really, the weirdness of friends is what makes them so great, or at least that's what anime says, and who am I to argue with anime? Yeah, I don't know where I'm going with that either, but Mighty Pie is cool, and I'm glad I got to meet him. Hope to do that again in the future. The next big event anime community-wise would have to be Akon in the summer, which is the big anime convention in uh, Dallas, Texas, and this is the second year that I've gone there. If you did not know, it's like halfway across the country because it's in Texas. I'm in Ohio, but I drove over there and that was a fun trip. It really is a surreal time to be in person with all these weird people who like Japanese cartoons as much as I do. Like Mighty Pi, the friends I went to the con with were those I originally met online and tried doing a podcast with even though that kind of died, but the friendships that I made through are still able to continue and I think that's cooler than any podcast thing that we've done. Maybe we'll do another one at some point though I, I actually kind of doubt it. We'll see. And I actually took another break from writing the script to play League of Legends with one of the guys I met this year through the friends I did the podcast with. So yeah, that was cool. I suck at League, but it was still fun to play with friends. And again, it's just cool to be with these people that you talk to online, talk about anime, and actually be in person and realize, yes, you are as obsessed with anime as I have. I've seen even more than me. And yeah, that's... It's really cool. So yeah, Jordan, Jason, Holy, and Kento, great people. If you see this, you're awesome. Thank you for spending time with me then and hope to do it again. I was actually trying to do it again over this weekend at the convention in Austin, but again, the cold Christmas day kind of prevented that, but oh well, we'll figure out something. And then there is VidMe, which in a lot of ways you could say was a failure. I was hopeful that it could be an alternative to YouTube for the anime community and could offer the competition that would force YouTube to either improve their services or just completely replace YouTube because it offers something better. But if you did not know, a few weeks ago, VidMe shut down because they could not financially uh, keep going. So yeah, that kind of sucked. And even before that, there really wasn't much on there anime-wise that interested me. And most of what I was interested in was just a repost from YouTube. But I did get to meet some cool people there, like, like old Sparrow, who I continue to talk to on Twitter and see tactics, though we'll get back to him later. So while VidMe may be over, the friendships I made from it will continue to live on, and that I'm really grateful for. I also want to give a shout out to all the other friends who I made or got to talk to more this year, like Crimson Assassin, who I met last year at the end of 12 days, and who I have enjoyed watching him suffer because of bad anime I somehow convinced him to watch. Yes, I know I'm a terrible person. Or 88 Expert, who I've known for a while, but we only talked on Skype starting this year, and it was just a lot getting to know him, hearing him complain about school, and all that, so that was fun. 
Uh, there's also Arkham, I think that's how you pronounce your name, who loves Twin Tails as much as I do. And he also got me to watch Hyperdimensional Neptune, which was, that was just a lot of fun. Then there's also Drac and Shadow, who are two guys who I almost forgot about, but then I remember because uh, Shadow's doing a live stream as I'm recording this, so I added this to the script. And yeah, it's just fun being part of their live streams, leaving questions for them, and I was able to join one or two live streams this year. I don't remember how many, but yeah, they're cool. So yeah, I should put a link of all these people down below in the description, which I'll probably forget, but I should still do that. Anyway, I hope to be able to talk to all these people, get to know them more, and get to know more wonderful people in the community. And then there's Discord. A lot of anime YouTubers have a Discord server for them and their fans, and I've joined a few of them over the past few months and years, but by far the most interesting one has to be the one run by Sea Tactics, which is the setting for this final story. Or shall we say, fan fictions. So a couple months back, we were discussing different anime from the fall season and somehow got on this topic of a sister is all you need, which I talked about back in day one, so go check out that video. Someone mentioned that they liked it and I said I did too, though I was not caught up because I was watching it with my younger sister. And it can be hard to be caught up on anime when you're having to watch it with someone else. Plus I have never caught up anyway, so yeah. And apparently, saying that you're watching an anime related to incest with your sister gets some reactions from people. And not just reactions, but three series of events I don't directly remember, and I'm not going to scroll up that far to read it. Three other people in the server wrote fan fictions about me and my sister because of me revealing that I watched incest kind of related anime with her. There's also the Super Lovers, which you watch a little bit of that together, but... That's a different topic. We're not going to go there. So yes, Abhi, Garfield, and Sea Tactics all wrote fan fiction about me and my sister. And yeah, those are, those are weird. You know you have made it on YouTube when people start writing fan fictions about you. But I never thought they could be that weird. Or inaccurate. Like, I would not go around my house making all those repairs. It's, that's just bad characterization. I expect more from you. See? But don't worry. I got my revenge by writing a story of love between Garfield and Sea Tactics like one the world had never seen before. And I have other fanfiction ideas too. We'll see if anything happens with those. I have no time to do any of these ideas, but that's what makes them fun. So yes, Discord makes us do weird things. And if you have a weird Discord that you think I should join, let me know. Or a non-weird one. Sometimes I need something like that to cleanse my brain. Another cool thing that I have gotten to do this year, and really for the past few years, is to spread awareness of the anime I love. Specifically, Ori Twin Tales, I guess there are a couple other cool ones too that I like talking about. But this past year, I've got several people to watch Ori Twin Tales, like watching with Monty Pie, Garfield, I think Abby started it, and maybe someone else, so yes. I'm spreading the love of Twin Tales, and so I can say my channel has truly been successful. Or something. And maybe there will be something on the podcast channel by the end of the year. Probably not. If so, I will be really surprised, but it is not completely impossible. Just mostly. But seriously, to everyone who has helped make this year great for me in the anime community, thank you. Whether it is having serious conversations, or send me memes via Twitter, Skype, or Discord, or whatever, or anything in between, you guys really do mean a lot to me. So I look forward to seeing what 2018 will hold for all of us. Anyway, thank you. I finished the 12 days, kind of late, but now I have to edit this. And I have no idea what I'm going to do for images here, so I'll just wing that. Talk to you later.